Well, good evening and welcome to Rich Thoughts for Evening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so used to Rich Thoughts for Breakfast, it just comes right out of my mouth. But welcome to Saturday night. Sunday night, okay. <laughs> Start over, start over. <laughs> Welcome to Sunday Night Live. Here with my handsome husband, Harold, and I am his wife, Bev. My which, fine wife, Bev. Which, that ought, that ought to give some folks out there a real, yeah. yeah. That, you know, Joel Osteen starts his programs on Sunday morning with a joke. Well, that was my joke. <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to say next, I guess. Yeah, you're funnier than he is. Oh. You know, we love reading. Yes, And we those do. of you who know us or watch our broadcast or listen in on a daily conference call, you know that to yes. be true. And I, rich I, thoughts for breakfast. Rich thoughts for breakfast. I, I particularly enjoy reading quotes that yeah. provoke my thinking, stir my creativity, and ignite my spirit. I mean, just stirs me up. And, and I was reading some quotes early, early, early this morning. I could almost say late last night. And I, and I was reading about Virgil, Virgil the uh, Roman poet. And, and I read three quotes, three things he said that just blew me away, and here's what I know. Those three quotes Virgil wrote 2,000, 35 years ago, for specifically with everybody here and everybody watching around the world in mind. I know he did it. I know he did it because of what those quotes say. Amen. The first quote, they can because they think they can. They can because they think they can. Years ago, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I cut the words quit, try, compromise, and can't out of my dictionary. Just totally cut them out. For me, for some, that would be a symbolic gesture. But for me, I just didn't want to. I didn't want to be a part of my vocabulary, especially the word can't. And back in the day, dictionaries were important. Yeah, they were. This is before you could Google everything and also. had dictionary.com and all that stuff. And, uh, and it was actually the only dictionary. I had. You know, I never looked to see what other words I cut out on the other side. But it doesn't matter because I did not want those words in my mental thought process, in my life, in my That's dictionary. Right. And, and people who say when the word can't is spoken by Christians in, in reference to their God's will for their lives, it is grammatically and spiritually inaccurate, wrong, and actually ignorant to say. All right. Because if you say things like that, then you obviously don't know the Word of God because can't is contrary to the Word of God when you say, I can't. Philippians 4.13. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strength, which strengtheneth me. All, not some, all not a few. Not what anybody says you can. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. In fact, I, I encourage you to personalize that verse. Those of you here tonight, you got the, the, the outline. Those of you watching around the world, you can print it out or if you copied it, you know, for, into a Word document so that you can save it. It's down at the right hand bottom corner. Bottom yeah. corner. And um, I encourage you to personalize that. Um, make it personal to you. Right. Paulette can do all things through Christ, which strengthens her. Mm -hmm. Fred can do all things through Christ, which strengthens him. Amen. Bev can do all things through Christ, which strengthens her. And we have other Bevs. Yeah, out all there. around. We do a lot of Bevs watching. That's actually. right. Several, lot, several lot in him. Amen. Point is, there's no equivocation That's right. in that verse. There's no asterisk at the, at the bottom, bottom of the page that says this doesn't apply in these situations. It says. That I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. He will never ask us to do something that we can't do. Mm -hmm. True, true. And, and see, the, the key component of that verse mm -hmm. is through Christ, which through, strengthens us. Exactly. So we can do all things through Christ. Through Christ. Who strengthens us. Amen. So here's a question. All things. All things. Is, is debt, getting out of debt a thing? Is, is having a proper retirement and investment portfolio a thing? Yes, it is. Is, is walking in divine health a thing? Is having a peaceful and, peaceful and loving family life a thing? Yes, it is. Is being free of any and all addictions yourself or those you love a thing? 
Absolutely. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Amen. I like that. Amen. I mean, if you get nothing else tonight, and I know you've heard Philippians 4.13 dozens, if not hundreds of times. My prayer today is, is in the last night as I was doing this, is for you to catch a fresh revelation yeah, exactly. of that scripture. I, Harold Harry, can do all things. I mean, I could get myself happy and shouting just saying that verse because of the realization and the power of it. And, and never let a scripture get old for you. In other words, you know, sometimes we read things and we read it so much that we feel like, well, you know, I know that, in other words. But the point of it is, is it doesn't matter how much you know it. I've, gone, I've said this over and over, but I, it sometimes bears repeating. And that is every time we speak a scripture, it comes alive because it's being put out there. It, the, it says the word is alive. So when we speak it out, li out loud, it has a dynamic that is released for our particular situation and what we're saying. So it never, ever gets old. Have you ever seen a, uh, a movie or a TV show where uh, there's, a, there's an impending enemy attack, they sound the alarm, and, and you see all the, all the pilots scrambling to get to their aircraft there to take off. This is good. I know where you're going. Yeah. When you speak the word, that's it. The angels in heaven, Amen. I got glory bumps. Me too. Are scrambling. That's right. Because they're coming to minister to you and that's to right. care for you. Because the alarm has been sounded. When you speak the word, they've been mobilized. They're energized, and they're under they're under divine command. There you go. Divine command. <laughs> I mean, amen. Before before we even speak this one again, I mean, I want we're going to read it in the Amplified. Think of this. It says in Isaiah, the word will not return void, but it must accomplish that which has been sent to do. So we're sending the word forth. And the they scramble just as hard the first time, the second time, the 685 millionth time as they did the first time because it's the word. I have a, I have a, something I saw somewhere and I put it on Facebook a year or so ago. And it, and it shows all these angels coming down out of heaven. Wow. Warrior angel, angels, mm -hmm. wings spread, armed. And it came down. Armed to the teeth. Armed to, and they're coming down and they're landing on earth. Mm. You catch a visual. That's right. That when you're speaking the word, that's exactly what's happening to you. And you speak the word, you may you. feel like you're going through a tough time, but when you're speaking the word, the whole host of heaven is coming down right now That's right. to care and, to, and protect you. And, and you go, well, you know, sometimes I just don't feel it. Well, you don't have to feel it because we don't walk by feelings. We walk by faith, not by sight. So it says, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me I am, now listen, incident in season and out of season, I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Hallelujah. So he stands ready at every moment. I mean, we are born again. He is ready. He is ready to, he is the word. So he's empowered through what we speak. Oh, we could do a whole, yeah, it's I mean, we've like, done It's kind of like a host of heaven are ready to come down yeah. and intercede on your behalf and, and to minister to you. And they're right there, they're ready to go. And it's like God saying, wait, wait, wait for, wait it. for it, wait for it. They're going to confess wait for it. it. And then you confess the word and he says, now. Woo. And they're out. That's Hallelujah. Right. He is our commander yeah. in chief. Hallelujah. Mm. Well, let's be clear. The word says that you can do all things. That's right. Not some, not a few. All things through Christ who strengthens you. If it's in the word. And if you believe the word. You can do it. You can claim you it. You can do it. You That's can claim right. it. Can mm -hmm. somebody say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Second. The second quote by Virgil. They can conquer. They can conquer who can believe they can. Think of that. 
they can conquer who believe they can. If you believe you can, you can. That's right. Because that's what the word says. Chuck Norris. <laughs> One of my, Chuck. I love Chuck Norris. You know, TV star, actor, strong Christian. Yes. And, but Norris said, and I, and I put some quotes in here for you tonight because I don't want you to just hear them. I want you to go back over them and meditate on them. This is good. Norris said, a lot of times people look at the negative side of what they feel they can do or what they can't do. A lot of times people look at the negative side of what they feel they can't do. I always look on the positive side of what I can do, what I can do. I mean, that is that is just so dynamic that we really could almost, we could almost just park on that all night. That's the same thing that we were in a, said in a different way that we talked about Zig Ziglar saying last week. You know, you can do so much more in the positive than when you're in the negative. So the point of it is, is the enemy likes you to, he likes to digress you right into what you can't do and what all the problems are and all the, you know, in doing something instead of looking for all, why spend time looking at the problems and what can't be done when you could be spending all your time looking at the solutions and what can be done. So it's really a matter of focus. What can be done? Not what can't be done. What can be done about this situation? And the Word and, of God. And truthfully, that ought to be answer. the perspective yes. of every born-again believer. Absolutely. Anybody who believes the Word says, I'm a Christian. Yeah. Who reads the Bible, that should be their perspective. And the minute you get off it, and you know the enemy is going to try to t get right back on it. Just jump right back on. Just jump right back on and keep it going. Whatever battle you're facing. That's right. Whatever adversaries may be at your door, mm. you got to know that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. That's right. And that if you act in faith, if you move in faith, then you're a, a winner. Conqueror, mm -hmm. That's right. and even an overcomer. Amen. Dr. Ben Carson, brilliant surgeon, strong Christian, as well a, as a former presidential candidate. Dr. Carson said, you have the ability to choose which way you want to go. There you go. You have to believe great things are going to happen in your life. Do everything you can. Prepare, pray, and achieve to make it happen. Mm. Strong quote. And that sounds like good advice to me. Amen. The third quote by Virgil that just stirred my creativity and imagination <laughs> was this one. Go forth a conqueror and win great victories. Go forth a conqueror. Don't be going out of some Casper milk toast, mealy mouth, unaware of who you are in Christ. That's right. If you do, you're going to come back with your tail between your legs because the devil knows that if you're not moving in the authority and the power of God's yeah. Word, you know, that's just, that's it. Mm. That's it. But as I read this third quote, it stirred in me that we should teach about becoming the conqueror that God wants us to be. Amen. Romans 8, 37 says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. I love that more than conquerors, through him that loved us. Wow. That's it. According to Strong's Concordance, the Greek word for conqueror is G5245. G5245. And it means to be more than a conqueror, to gain a surpassing victory. Mm. Now, I noticed that conqueror, as I was looking in Strong's, came from a, comes from a root word, a uh, Greek word, G3528, G3528, which is translated 24 of 28 times in the Bible, is overcome, is overcome. So in order to be a kingdom conqueror, mm -hmm. you must be a world overcomer. Mm -hmm. But that's what the word says we can do. How do you become a kingdom conqueror, a world overcomer? Here are seven steps. Number one. Be confident that God will bring you the victory. Be confident that God will bring you the victory. That's good. 1 Samuel 17, verse 9, in the New International Version. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. This is David talking about Goliath. 
But if I overcome and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. Those are bold words speaking by David. Right. Now the scripture doesn't tell us whether or not King Saul knew that David was going to make such a bold statement. But I'm pretty sure he did. I'm pretty sure he did. <laughs> but see, I think David already knew the beginning from the end. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, and, and David was not fighting in his own strength. Amen. He knew in his heart that God would give him the victory. Mm. As, if he, as, as each of you, those here tonight and, and those watching around the world, as each of you fight the good fight, Amen. you got to get to the place where you know in your heart without a shadow of a doubt that God will give you the victory. Amen. And that you will be a conqueror and overcomer no matter the intensity, the ferocity, 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 furiousness of the account, there you of go. the attack. Uh, ferocity is the right word, uh, of the attack. Uh, you just got to know, and, and you can have confidence that as you fight the good fight, that God will protect you. There's a powerful verse in Jeremiah 1.19. That's it, in the New International Version. It says, they will fight against you, but will not overcome you. For I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. And that one leads right into a scripture in also in the New International Version of Matthew 16, 18, which says, And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. Hallelujah. Amen. It's 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 amazing. Hallelujah. That's right. Makes me want to jump, run, shout. It does. I'm holding this table so I don't jump up and throw the camera off. And then I would, then I would have to take over. And then I might, but okay. Number two. Two. No weapon of the enemy formed against you will prosper. Amen. No weapon. Not some. Not might. I know. I love. No I mean, weapon it... formed against you shall prosper. If you want God to say something with definite, I mean, it's going to happen. I mean, he uses all. He uses all ways. He says, no, I mean, not just some, but no. Not if you do this, you'll hold your nose right, you know. No, no weapon. No for, equivocation. Exactly. He makes it no equivocation that this is the way it is. And then he wants us to have, be bold enough to claim it and walk it out. And that's sometimes where we lose the focus is walking it out. But knowing, mm, I'm, I'm coming up with some good ones that we're going to have to teach. But anyway, okay. about, I mean, there's so many examples in the word. Luke 19. Mm. Verse Luke 10, uh, 10, 19. 19. Ooh, mama. Yeah, that's my, my mother in love and mine, one of our, and my husband's favorite verses. This is in the New International Version. It says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. The King James Version, the translation of the last part says, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. The Message Bible says, and protection from every assault of the enemy, no one can put a hand on you. Huh. Those last eight words. They're powerful. No one can put a hand on you. Mm -hmm. no Nothing one can hurt can put you a hand by on any you. means. By That's any a great means sentence to confess, you. possess, personalize, right. make it your own. No one can put a hand on Joy. There you go. No one can put a hand on Randy. No one can put a hand on Laurel. Just personalize that for yourself. That's right. See, the devil doesn't want us fighting the good fight. He doesn't want us overcoming. In fact, he, frankly, he'd like nothing more than for our reputation as Christians mm -hmm. just to, well, he wants to hurt it. He wants to render us ineffective that's right. for kingdom service. That's exactly what he wants to do. And that's why we wage warfare against principalities, powers, and spiritual darkness. That's right. Because that's what he's trying to do. And see, it's a, that's the reason we need to draw on the grace of the Lord to overcome 
in traps and temptations That's so right. that we can be ambassadors for the kingdom and that we can move in such authority That's right. that, <clears throat> that even when you walk by, people just they know go out because they feel the power of God. That's right. The out. thing of it is, is when the enemy comes against you, this used to help me a lot when I was a new Christian because I didn't know as much of the word and whatever, but I would go, I am not giving him you know, I, once you learn to recognize the wiles of the enemy and how he just tries to move in your life and mess things up, I just refuse to give him the satisfaction of getting me, you know, of making me mad, of getting to me, because I know that that's just his way of, of neutralizing me or making me not stand before God with, with a clean slate. And if you get mad... It's not God making you mad. It's not. It's the enemy that's making you mad. It's, you know, he just, he, he get, things can happen and you, and you have a choice of which way you want to respond It's okay to, it. to get mad. Yes. If you get mad at the devil. That's it. That's who you get mad at. And you call him out right. for the liar, that the accuser, the deceiver that that's he right. really is. That's what you do. That's it. <sighs> Putting that one to bed, right? I know. Number three, renewing your mind will prevent you from being overcome by evil. Yes. Renewing your mind will prevent you from being overcome mm -hmm. by evil. Joyce Meyer, yeah. she said, as you pray for the Holy Spirit to make you aware of the thoughts that come into your mind that don't line up with God's Word, you'll begin to realize when those thoughts come, and you can remove, renew your mind with the Word of God. That's right. It, you, you can't keep wrong thoughts from coming into your head. But, you know, you know, you can't stop a bird from landing on your head. Just don't let it build a nest and stay right. there. When those words come, you need to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. and, and just get, you want to get righteously indignant at the devil yeah. and what he's trying to do. And call them out. Call them out. When uh, the old saying used to be, when the devil comes to your door, you send the word of God to meet him because he can't stand that. And praise, praise and worship. And I mean, that'll take him down in a heartbeat. And, and if you, uh, <laughs> don't be putting a welcoming, welcome mat out That's for That's right. He goes back where he's been received before. That's so right. So just take the welcome mat up and, and hide it so he knows yep. he's not welcome at this house anymore. That's right. To do that. As they used to say, don't go meet in trouble halfway. He's, he's, his trouble's capable of coming all the way to your house. Don't even go out and meet it. So, or look for it. And this is a little bit don't off, but I remember, I don't know who I was talking to yesterday, but somebody, I, I did a message one time at a church, and you know, I was talking about just, you know, how the devil would come against me. And this man walked up to me and said, I don't know, I must be doing something right. You know, I never run into the devil. I, I looked at him that. and smiled and said, that's because you're going in the same direction. Yeah. <laughs> you're not running into him and he's not trying If you're not to... running into him, you're going the same direction he is. Yeah, <laughs> that's not a good there's thing. There's no doubt about it. Romans Hallelujah. 12, 21. Yeah. In today's Strong. new international version. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. You're, ca it's cap you're capable of doing it, it says right here in the Word. In the Amplified Bible, Romans 12, 21, do not let yourself be overcome by evil, but overcome master evil with good. You know, it says there's no temptation taken unto man, but what God doesn't give you a way of escape. You can overcome. Um, you can overcome. You can overcome. You, you have to work at it, yeah. But you can overcome. Don't let the enemy try to talk you out of it. I agree. Oh, sometimes it takes a little while. And sometimes you got to crucify the flesh. Yes, you do. But Paul talked about that. Wow. In Romans 7, 18 through 25. Yes, he did. In the message. This Bible. is in the message. I love this, these verses. That's interesting. But I need something more. Now listen to this. This is interesting. But I need something more, for if I know the law but still can't keep it, and if the power of sin within me keeps sabotaging my best intentions, 
I obviously need help. I realize that I don't have what it takes. I can will it, but I can't do it. I decide to do good, but I don't really do it. I decide not to do bad, but then I do it anyway. My decisions, such as they are, don't result in actions. Something has gone wrong deep within me and gets the better of me every time. It happens so regularly that it's predictable. The moment I decide to do good, sin is there to trip me up. I truly delight in God's commands, but it is pretty obvious that not all of me joins in that delight. Parts of me covertly rebel, and I just and just when I least expect it, they take charge. I've tried everything, and nothing helps. I'm at the end of my rope. Is there any? Is there no one who can do anything for me? Isn't that the real question? Now listen to the incredible answer. I really love the King James too, but I'll read it out of the message. The answer, thank God, is that Jesus Christ can and does. He acted to set things right in this life of contradictions where I want to serve God and with all my heart and mind, but am pulled by the influence of sin to do something totally different. And I love it. It says, praise God, Jesus, and I should have looked up the, my King James. It says, has conquered it all. He has done it. He has you know, pulled it together, and he, if, you know, we're relying on him, he will overcome anything that we cannot do. Praise God, he made the way when there was no way in us. I, I remember Rick Renner years ago teaching Ephesians 2 when he talked about uh, being dead to sin. And he said, uh, he goes, it's dead he said, is the actual Greek word necro, and he said it means a lifeless body, meaning, you know, we have been made dead, you know, to sin. We have the ability within us now to be able to resurrect, you know, Christ's life because we traded our sin and got his righteousness, and if we allow him to take over, if we're renewing our lives in him, did you find it? then, mm, what does it say in that one? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with flesh, the law of sin. Mm, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's it. That he has provided the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can never rely on our own goodness. That's right but we must constantly rely on the Lord living through us. Okay, you know, if you, right, let me, I'd like to interject something that I think is really important at this point right now. Um, I want you to, I want you to think about this because what Harold just said really sparked something in me. When you've been a Christian a long time and you're used to walking in the way and you don't have the temptations that you used to have, I mean, really, they don't bother you. Those things that used to really take you down, you have now conquered. You've now conquered those things in you. You have to be very careful. And it just reminds me of the, it's a teaching really, but it was a conversation between two pastors when this one pastor came to another one. And he said, you know what? He goes, I don't know why I cannot break through because I'm doing everything right. And the other pastor, I remember he said to himself, he thought, he was just taken back because he was doing what he felt like he needed to do, but we never do everything right. We're going to make mistakes. We are not righteous people. It's only Jesus in us, and we can't ever get to the point where we feel like we are right. We are righteous because it is the Jesus in us that makes us righteous. That's so good. I don't care how... That's very good. marvelous we are and what a great sermon we've given and how people come up and say you are so wonderful it is all they're seeing is that we've been able to get rid of enough of us who is definitely not righteous and let Jesus shine through but it's always Jesus and he'll always be the one who needs the credit because it is not us if we think it's us we can't live we will fall with our works 
but Jesus Christ the righteous has made provision for us to be able to sometimes look good mm -hmm. because we've allowed Jesus to go through us, but it was still not us doing the work. That's why we can lay hands on people and do things with confidence because it isn't us doing it. It's just Jesus doing it through us and we're just being the conduit. We're just being the one who is being able to be used, the privilege of being used to be able to minister to that person. When they tell you how you've blessed them. That's it. How God has used you mm. to heal them and just say, Pastor, I was healed. That's it. You know, he gets the glory. Amen. And the honor. Amen. I'm just a vessel. I'm just a vessel. <sighs> Joyce Meyer also said, I've discovered that when we take time to renew our minds with God's word, we learn how to think like God thinks, say what God says, yeah. and act that's like right. he wants us to act. That's it. That's what Hallelujah. we're learning to do. We're taking us out and putting him in. Act like but he wants us to act. But that's all that we are doing. Hallelujah. Amen. When we learn to live mm -hmm. more deeply and completely in Christ. That's right. We begin to think like, like he, he thinks. thinks. That's right. Which leads us to one of my favorite I scriptures know it. and translations. And this is where we're heading all the time. Romans 12, 2, this is in the New Living Translation. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person Go ahead. by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. But let, underline let, meaning it's a choice we make. That's right. Whether or not we allow that to happen. It's a choice we make. But let, allow God to transform you to a new person. And it also means that he's the one doing it. Yep, it does. Not us, not we ourselves. Number four, inner resources become our outward strength. Yes. Inner resources become our outward strength. Amen, that's I so love good. Smith Wigglesworth. Oh, I used to quote this all the time. I need to go back. Wigglesworth said, I'm a thousand times bigger yes. on the inside than I am on the outside. That's right. Hallelujah. That's what God does for us. Amen. Allows us to be a thousand times bigger on the inside how do than we, we get could to be that? ever be on the outside. How do, we get, how do we get to be a thousand times bigger? Through the Word. Through the Word. Through the Word. It says in 1 John 4, 4, this is in the Amplified Bible, Little children, you are of God. You belong to Him and have already defeated and overcome then the agents, the agents of the Antichrist because, this is how you do it, He who lives in you is greater, mightier than he who lives in the world. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow, that's powerful. Hallelujah. In the book of Revelation, the, the one book that tells the end of the story. That's right. The Apostle John, he gives us what I call inside information. There you go. Inside information on, on what will take place. And he also tells us how to overcome the enemy. That's right. Very clear, very direct. Yeah. And, and so, uh, where, I mean, you, so where you can understand it. Yep. Yeah. Romans 12, 11, this is in the Amplified Bible. And they overcame, okay, or they overcome, or they conquered him, meaning the enemy, the, the devil, all his demons, by means of the blood of the lamb. In other words, when we are born again, we are born again, that's the blood of the lamb. And by the utterance of their testimony, we only confess what God says, not what the devil wants us to say. We only confess the word of God. And it says, and they did not love and cling to their lives. We have given up our life. In other words, we've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live. Yet we don't live. Christ lives through us so that, and so that we can live and function. He, he can live and function as, you know, through us. And, and we're not even 
we're not even there anymore. They just see Jesus in us. Okay, I got, we've given up the life of the, you know, and, and as the Lord instructs us to live it in him. And then the rest of scripture says, even when faced with death, they were holding their lives cheap until they, were, they died for their, their witnessing. That's strong stuff. It is. You know, a lot, most of everybody here in our voice, maybe everybody here in our voice, may not be asked to, to die for Christ. But you know, he does want, ask one very specific thing of us, and that is to li let him live through us. You may not be a physical death. That's right. But it needs to be a spiritual death. So that he Meaning can, you need to die to yourself. And, uh, when, it, when it bugs you, that means your flesh is rising up because it, you know, I mean, yeah, your flesh is true. rising up. True. Because when, when they're, Moses, this is, he's a great example. I know I'm getting off a little bit and probably don't need to. But Moses, you know, he just, he was never moved. You know, when they came against, he just never said anything. The reason was because they weren't speaking against him. They were speaking about, against the God in him. And the thing of it is, is when people move against us, they're not against us. They're against the Jesus in us. And that's really the way to look at it. So he's the one who will take care of it. He's the one who will set us free. Wow. He's the one who has to, they have to answer to, not us, not us. We just represent him. I believe God wants to give you a burning bush yeah. experience. Think of that. Mm. It'll change your life. This is all about the inner strength, you know, Meyer, Maya. Maya, Maya, Angela. Yeah. She once She's said, amazing. nothing can dim the light which shines within. And one of my favorite African proverbs is one that says, Yes, that's good. If the enemy within can do you no harm, neither can the enemy without. That's so powerful. That is. Now, yeah. I'm not going to tell you that you won't get bruised and battered. Beat up a while, bit. Beat up a bit while growing on the inside. That's right. But I can tell you to hold fast to the confession of your faith. Amen. Because you will be victorious. That's right. Pastor Joel Osteen said, We may get knocked down on the outside, but the key to living in victory is to learn how to get up on the inside. Now that is a powerful, <laughs> That's a strong quote. powerful quote. Yeah. I how mean, to get up on the inside. And there are going to be times in this when life. The enemy just spiritually knocks you, tries yeah, to knock you out. I mean, hits you in the knees. You know, and but, knock and buckles. But you rise up. And you, but you rise inside. up on the inside and go, I will not succumb to what the enemy has planned for me. Yeah, just catch a visual of yourself. That's right. Next time the enemy does that, comes against you mm -hmm. some way or like it has in the past, just catch a visual of you rising up. But you're not rising up. You got those angels picking you up under your shoulders and lifting you up. Right. Because of what you got inside of you. Amen. And what you got inside of you mm. will help you take the devil to the woodshed and give him a black eye and a bloody nose. That's it. Number five, confidence in the outcome. Amen. We have confidence in knowing. We have confidence in knowing. Listen to this. That one day our lives will move in total victory. That's right. Mm. And that's where we're headed. That's where we're progressing. That's right. Where, well, you know. Everybody's heading there. That's exactly right. Who's a right. Christian? That's one of them. Revelation 3.21. This is in the Amplified Bible. He who overcomes is victorious. I will grant him to sit beside me on my throne as I myself overcame, was victorious, and sat down beside my father on his throne. It's time to recognize that you need to fight to yeah. win mm -hmm. as an overcomer. That's right. And a conqueror over every adversity that you face. That's right. Over every trick, trap, lie, deception, and while the enemy brings against you, mm -hmm. you know, because you're more than a conqueror, you're an overcomer. That's right. And you can do this, because you can do all the things through That's Christ, right. which strengthens you. Mm. Amen. He enables and empowers us to become conquerors over every adversity. Found in Romans 8, 37, and the King James says, Nay, in all these things, remember we read this, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Does that give you a little more oomph after we've talked about all those things to read that again? Hey, you got another quote I by know. Anonymous. Yeah. Anonymous. Anonymous, Anonymous is a smart man or woman. It. 
because I read more quotes by Anonymous than by anybody else. There you go. But Anonymous said, not Anonymous to God. That's right. But he said, you need to understand that life isn't what you're given. It's what you create, what you conquer, what you aim to achieve. Amen. That is, is good. strong. Oh, I could preach on some of this for another hour. I know. Psalm 71, verse 5, fear not. In the Amplified Bible, for you are my hope, O Lord God. You are my trust from my youth and the source of my confidence. Hallelujah. Mm. Yeah, and all of this, you got to have your confidence in the right person. That's right. And that person is our Lord. That's right. And we give you three scriptures there, two scriptures to look mm -hmm. at. But let's move on to number six. Oh, they're so good, too. Remember who gives you the victory. Yeah. Remember who gives you the victory. You're a victorious, you're an overcomer, you're a conqueror. Who gives you the victories? And we can find the answer in the Word. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 is one example in the Amplified. But thanks be to God, this is, yeah, who gives us the victory, making us conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. I think this is the one that I was thinking about when I remembered that scripture. But thanks be to God. You know, when we've been through it, Thanks be to God who gives us the victory and makes us conquerors because of what Jesus That's did for us. That's a good one us. to personalize, too. Mm -hmm. Thanks be to God. Wow. Hallelujah. 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 Who gives Yvette the victory? There you go. Making her a conqueror, a conqueror through our Lord Jesus Christ. Can the enemy defeat you, any other member of the body of Christ? Nope. Mm -mm. Can I? Revelation 2.11, yep, classic amplified, yep. tells you the truth. Are your ears awake? Listen. Listen to the wind words, the spirit blowing through the churches. Christ conquers, are safe from devil death. I believe that was the message. But anyway, <clears throat> doesn't matter. It's part. It's you the got word. a choice. You can continue fighting um, until you're a winner in the game of life. Amen. Overcoming every storm, the enemy brings your way mm. or you know you can experience the consequences found in revelation 21 6. this is in the message then he said it's happened i'm a to z i'm the beginning i'm the conclusion from water of life well i give freely to the thirsty conquerors inherit all this i'll be god to them they'll be sons and daughters to me but for the rest the fleckless and the faithless, degenerates and murderers, sex peddlers and sorcerers, idolaters and all liars. For them, it's the lake of fire and brimstone, the second death. So it's wisdom to remember who gives you the victory yes. in every situation. Amen. Who allows you to be an overcomer, a conqueror. Mm. Hallelujah. And see, we're actually more than conquerors because of our reliance on the Lord Amen. and the Word of God. Amen. Number seven, the recognition you will receive as a victorious overcomer. In, ath in, in athletic events, the, the winners always achieve some sort of recognition. That's right. Question, what recognition will you achieve for fighting the good fight as an overcomer and by being more than a conqueror? Mm. The answer can be found? Revelation 3.5. This is also the Message Bible. Conquerors will march in the victory parade. Their names indelible in the book of life. I'll lead them up and present them by name to my father and his angels. Wow. Second scripture is Revelation 3.20. That's it. Also in the Message Bible. Look at me. I stand at the door. I knock. If you hear me, call and open the door. I'll come right in and sit down to supper with you conquerors will sit alongside me at the head table just as I having conquered took the place of honor at the side of my father that's my gift to the conquerors wow amen you may feel like that you're in the battle of your life right now if you do you need to draw strength from the word of God that yep. we've quoted in this teaching amen and recognize that the only way you lose only way that's right. Is if you quit. That's right. If you don't, you know, if you're not obedient to his instructions and mm -hmm. directions, and don't you try up. to do it on your own. That's right. 
And then you're going to lose. You know, this time of year, there are fairs, county fairs, and you walk the midways and you go, winter every time. Well, that's not true. But there is a winner every time in the Word of God. Amen. And when you do what the Word says, just remember as we talked about at the beginning, the, the angels sitting up there That's ready right. for you to confess the Word. If you, yeah, and there when you so speak the Word, just, you need to get an image of that. <laughs> you do. And, that, and, that'd and be fact, good. You know. <clears throat> That's a great image. It really is. It really is. Amen. Well. Wow. Right down I am a more than a conqueror. That's right. Through I'm an Jesus overcomer. Christ who died and gave himself for you. And just start kicking down yep. the gates of hell. That's right. Hell. Yeah. And any time any time the enemy tries to bring this stuff to you, make him scream like he's on a big roller coaster. Right. He's afraid of heights. Or whatever. Okay? Okay. That was good. Yes, it was. God is so good. He is good. My. Every day, in every way. If you'd have told me a day ago that I'd been using quotes from Virgil for a teaching, well, God, God, God is so good when he just showed me that mm. and allowed me to see those. Amen. Study those quotes. Study your notes. That's right. And take your mouse, move up to the top where it says, sow a seed and just ask God if you've been blessed by the teaching. Amen. What seed he'd have you sow, what he'd have you put in the ground. Do what he says. That's, that's all we ever ask. That's right. Make sure you check out this week's two-minute video. And by all means. Amen. By, I set know your where clock, you're going. Set your watch. That's right. To listen to Rich Sauce for breakfast tomorrow morning at Amen. 830. Amen. And if you're on the way to work, you can listen then. That's it. If you can't listen then, you can listen to the playback. On the way to work, you can listen to the playback from this morning. Because this morning was really good. It was good. It was good. They're all good. Yep. So you've got until tomorrow morning at 8.30 to listen to today's. And in the morning, join us. You will be glad you did. And until then. That's right. What God you? bless you. Happy trails. And keep thinking rich thoughts. We love you. Bless you. you. Good night.